This is meteorologist Alex Ferguson with the National Weather Service in Amarillo. We're going to take you on a little tour of the radar data from the supercell thunderstorm that spawned four tornadoes between Happy, Texas and Washburn, Texas on Saturday, March 13th, 2021. So what are we looking at here? We're going to see this type of image with these four panels a lot. We're looking at velocity data. Uh, what do we mean by that? Well, when the radar sends out little pulses, it can measure how rain droplets in a storm are moving in relation to where the radar is located. Our radar is located northeast of this storm, so those that area of red is actually rain droplets moving away from the radar. The greens and the blues are rain droplets moving toward the radar. From this, we can infer rotation in the parent thunderstorm. One reason we're looking at velocity and not storm relative velocity, which we actually tend to use operationally instead of standard velocity, we wanted to keep an apples-to-apples -apples comparison through the event. A storm relative velocity can change based on the motion of the storm, which does change a few times over this whole event. So, and in any case, the velocity data, the standard velocity data itself, that is, is enough to illustrate the rotation and what we're talking about. It's more, it ends up being more than enough, actually. So what are these four panels? Top left, half degree velocity. Top right, 0.8 degrees bottom left 1.3 and bottom right 1.8 degrees. What we mean by degrees is the elevation angle of the radar as it's sending out pulses. So left to right, top to bottom, we are ascending in the storm with our look at, our look at radar velocity. Why are we looking at these four? We can see both low-level rotation and mid-level rotation in the supercell thunderstorm and we're going to be able to see these about every three and a half minutes through the event. We had a radar in an operating mode called mid-volume rescan of low-level elevations that allows us more frequent looks, not just at the lowest slice, but at the rotation of the parent mesocyclone of the uh, supercell thunderstorm itself. At 3.15 p.m. Central Standard Time, the first of the four tornadoes that this uh, video will cover uh, began there on the Swisher County line. We also see why we are in that MRLE operating mode. We're not just looking at 0.5 more often, we want to look at the mid-level rotation more often. Take a look at 1.8 degrees in the bottom right. We see strong rotation there first before we even see it at 0.5 and before we even see it at 0.5 the tornado is already in progress. So that's why we want to look a little bit aloft in the low to mid part of the parent thunderstorm. Additionally, it's important to note that the positional accuracy of the WSR-88D is not perfect, and those, the tornadoes do not always exactly align with where the strongest rotation is. So just two minutes before this radar image here at 3.31 p.m. Central Standard Time, a satellite tornado began right near the main circulation. A big thank you to all the storm spotters and chasers who sent us images and videos of this tornado. As you can see there in the radar data, you don't see two separate circulations. We're still shooting at about 2,000 feet here, so because we have those photos and those videos, we can confirm that there was a second tornado that occurred northwest of Happy as the main tornado was moving northeast. Just a minute before this radar image at 3.48 p.m. Central Standard Time, based on our storm survey, chaser videos, and chaser images, a second tornado is in progress. Right around there, it'll become obvious here over the next couple of time steps here with the radar data. For the next 12 minutes, it will be in progress at the same time as the Happy to Palo Duro Canyon tornado. That is the much more apparent rotation there just to the southwest. This uh, supercell is what we term a cyclic supercell, um, gener uh, generating multiple uh, mesocyclones over the life of the storm. The original mesocyclone is weakening, and its associated tornado will dissipate here in 12 minutes. And the newer mesocyclone and its associated tornado have just begun. So it's now 4.02 p.m. Central Standard Time. Just a couple minutes before this, the Happy to Palo Duro Canyon tornado lifted. 
The Palo Duro Canyon tornado is still in progress. Uh, we see that area of strong, tight rotation uh, just to the southeast of Lake Tanglewood. One thing to note, we've got this area of strong inbounds velocity, that is, mo motion toward the radar, which is just to the north of our image here. That's kind of wrapping around the parent circulation of the whole storm. If you head back a little bit in our video, you'll see that occurring before the Polidoro Canyon tornado gets started. So guess, guess what's going to happen here over the next few minutes. Moving ahead to 4.09 p.m. Central Standard Time, three minutes before this image at 4.06, well, what, what you would expect to happen has occurred. We have another tornado. The Palo, the Palo Duro Canyon tornado is still in progress, but the Washburn tornado has begun. This is now the third instance of having two tornadoes in progress at the same time with this supercell. Here at 4.25 p.m. Central Standard Time, we shifted radar modes. With the tornado approaching the city of Washburn, which is located in that white circle there, we wanted to as closely track the exact location of the tornado that we could. So instead of focusing on these four lowest elevation slices, we focused on only the lowest slice. Up there in the top left, the half degree velocity image will be updating over the next several time steps, while the other three do not update. This mode is called sales. So looking at this image at 4.35 p.m. Central Standard Time, one minute before this at 4.34, the Washburn tornado ended. As the storm moved northeast, we issued an additional tornado warning for Carson County, especially the city of Panhandle. Uh, the reason we did this was, as we have seen over this with this radar data here over the last about hour and a half, this storm was able to repeatedly produce tornadoes and we wanted to be sure it was done. Uh, it was done producing those before we quit putting tornado warnings on it. So if you are in the city of Panhandle and wondering why you had a tornado warning on Saturday when there wasn't a tornado, this is why those past 90 minutes uh, really had us concerned that we could at least get another tornado out of the storm.